On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to take a look at an ancient Hebrew idiom. It's called Lador Acharon. Three people in the Bible used this term, Moses, David, and Jesus. Now, we do not have the Hebrew in Matthew 24, but we do have Jesus saying, uh, this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. He said this also in Mark 13, 30 and in Luke 21, 32. We're going to take a look at this, in, at this famous um, saying. We're going to look at the last generation, the Lador, Akharon. Gary Stimmen mm -hmm. is here to discuss this with me. Mm -hmm. Now, J.R., the, uh, the Hebrew uh, phrase, the little Hebrew phrase, Lador Akharon, means two the generation following, as if you, you would write a letter uh, and say to J.R. Church, and then you write your memo or your letter. It's kind of an address, the way it's used in the, uh, in the Old Testament, and it means to the generation following, as in tell this to the generation following is the way it's translated in the King James Bible, and we'll look at the yes. places where it's translated that way, but J.R. actually it that, doesn't mean it that. It doesn't mean that. The rabbis translated it from Hebrew into English as the last generation. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what it is. It is the generation Jesus was talking about when he said this generation, the Lador Acharon, would not pass away till all the prophecies are fulfilled. So we're going to go back into the Old Testament to Moses, who was the one who first used this in Deuteronomy chapter 29, and look at uh, what he was referring to here when he used this term, the Acharon, and then when David references it in Psalm 48, and Psalm 78, and Psalm 102. So, this is going to be a fascinating study. Gary, let's begin mm -hmm. with Deuteronomy chapter 29, and Moses' use of the term. Now, this term is not exactly, in, in Hebrew, Lador, Acharon, mm -hmm. but it is a reference to the same thing, because it was yeah. later called <clears throat> that by David. The, the idea is, is introduced by Moses, Deuteronomy 29, 22. And essentially, J.R., the context here in Deuteronomy chapter 29 is the scattering of Israel, that is, the scattering of Israel throughout the nations, and then their subsequent regathering. And as we read this, it says, <clears throat> uh, so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you, and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land, and the sicknesses which the Lord hath laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning it. And, and it goes on, J.R., to describe a disaster-filled Israel, infertile soil, mm -hmm. uh, land like a desert, uh, land like Sodom and Gomorrah. And what it's describing is the way Israel was in the latter days when that generation came back to the land. And of course, we've all seen the pictures of the great Aliyahs starting in the 19th century when those Russian Jews came back. Mm -hmm. All they found was swamp and desert. Mm -hmm. Now, some years ago, um, we learned that the rabbis had counted the verses in the Torah. That's the first five books, Genesis through Deuteronomy. And they came up with the idea that these verses literally give the years. That is, if it is the 5,708th verse, mm -hmm. then it tells what will happen to Israel in the year 5,708, which of course would be 1948. So, Gary, looking at verse 22 of chapter 29, what year would that be? Mm -hmm. Well, that would be uh, 1936, 56. Uh, uh, 96. Okay. So that would be uh, during the time when Adolf Hitler was coming to power and the Jews were realizing that uh, mm -hmm. this was the last generation. 
No. And, and those are the children who suffered so. They really did, Jair. That was the pinnacle of the suffering going from 96, 1936 through 45. Uh, remember, in, in Deuteronomy uh, uh, 29, 22, which we're focusing on, this little phrase in your King James Bible, so that the generation to come of your children really should read, so that the last generation of your children. Mm -hmm. Because the, the Hebrew phrase is hador ha'akaron, that literally render, rendered as the last generation. JR, it's, yes. it's clearly talking about a generation that will see the culmination mm -hmm. of the times of the Gentiles. And I believe that's what Jesus was telling his disciples when he said, this generation shall not pass. I believe he was referring to the generation that would see the culmination of the times of the mm -hmm. Gentiles. Now, just to convince you that this is not some made up story, let's go to the 5,708th verse, which would be in the next chapter. Mm -hmm and um, read uh, what happens in that land. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. This would be uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 5, uh, corresponding to the 5,708th verse of the Torah, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. Now, J.R., that corresponds to the year 1948. Yes, that's the 5,708th verse or the year 5008, 5708 in the Jewish calendar, our calendar 1948, they went back and possessed the land. So there seems to be some credibility here. Mm. The fact that, uh, that this is called the last generation is also mm. most important, Gary. Oh, it's most important because when you say last generation, you, you, you have to define what last means. What does last pertain to? Certainly it's not going to be the last generation because there will be generations going on into the millennium. So the last of what? Well, we believe that we're talking about the last generation prior to the establishment of the kingdom. The last generation uh, when the Jews were, have been downtrodden by the nations. Yes. So that puts us then in this time. And Jared, one thing I have to add quickly, and that is in Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, we have this little tidbit. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. This little note, J.R., implies there's something hidden inside of these verses that we need to, to discover. Mm -hmm. And it's very possible that the Lador Acaron is that discovery. Yes. Now let's go over to David. We've seen what Moses had to say about it. Let's see what David has to say about the Lador Acheron, and that would be in Psalm 48. Mm -hmm. Remember, Psalm 48 de uh, describes the United Nations going, sending a delegation to the Middle East, coming back and recommending that the UN establish the state of Israel. For lo, the kings were assembled, they passed by together, they saw it, and they marveled, troubled, hasted away, fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. There's the birth of the baby, the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Gary, if this is the birth of the nation, then it is the birth of the last generation. Absolutely. And again, we define the last generation as the last generation of Israel that will be oppressed by the Gentiles. After that generation, then yes. they'll be going into the kingdom. Yes. And now, Jared, so re let's read verse 13 mm -hmm. now of, of Psalm 48. Yes. Because once we've established the birth of Israel in verse 6, yes. the woman in travail, verse 13 tells us that it is the Lador Akharon. Absolutely. And I'm going to read 12 and 13. Walk about Zion, go round about her, tell the towers thereof. This is a command to walk around. Uh, Jerusalem, Mount Zion, do make measurements, do archaeological studies. Verse 13 says, mark ye well her bulwarks. That means to check out all the underpinnings and the foundations of the city. Consider her palaces, that you may tell it to the generation following, it says in the King James, but it, it, it is, uh, J.R., this phrase, la dor acaron, yes. to the last 
generation. Yes, the generation born in verse 6 with the woman in travail. Yes. And this, to me, is so fascinating. It is. In just five verses later, Gary, in Psalm 49, verse 4, uh, we read, I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. So we're going to be looking at this secret things. Yes. This parable and dark saying. Right. Because they are associated with Lador Acaron. Absolutely. The things hidden within these scriptures. So don't go away. We're coming back in just a moment. Now remember, we're talking about Jesus saying. In Matthew 24, verse 34, he told his disciples, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. J.R., that uh, statement by Jesus, I suppose, has been the subject of more conversation among Christians than maybe any other of his sayings. What did he mean when he said this generation? Well, we believe that we know what he meant. Yes, now remember, the disciples had asked, what, uh, what is the sign of your coming into the end of the world? Mm -hmm. Okay, when shall these things be? And in answer to that, he talked about wars, rumors of wars, disease, mm -hmm. uh, uh, earthquakes in various places. Right. And, and he goes on down then to say this generation. So he was not talking about the generation in his day. No. He was talking about the last generation. And furthermore, J.R., he was talking about the end of the world. Well, if you look in the, in the Greek, it's cosmos, which means the end of the age, yes. uh, which might be better stated, the end of the Gentile rule. Yes. That's what his disciples were really asking. When uh, will the Gentile rule end? And the end of the generations. Yes. The last generation. So when Jesus said, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled, we know that there are still things yet to be fulfilled to this very day. So, but we are seeing things fulfilled. Yes, we are. Therefore, before this generation runs out, it's entirely possible that all the prophecies will be fulfilled. Now, there are three people in the Bible who use this term concerning the last generation. That is the end of days. Mm -hmm. That would be Moses, in yes. Deuteronomy 29, and when he did, he talked about the children that would be born to that last generation. And, and then we have David in uh, Psalm 49, uh, 48, telling us that uh, Israel would be born. That would be the last generation. So the generation born in mm -hmm. 1948 would be that last generation, the Lador Acheron. Yes. And then we come over to Psalm 78, Gary, and we have almost the identical same statements again. And let's read the opening, uh, uh, let's read the opening four verses of Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which have been heard and known, and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. J.R., there it is again. Mm -hmm. The generation to come is a translation of the Hebrew, Lador Akaron, which yes. means the last generation. Yes, we have the secret things. The secret things. We have the parables and the dark sayings. Yes, we do. And the last generation. And uh, verse 5 says that they should make them known to their children. So we're talking about the children that will become the last generation. <clears throat> and verse 6 says that the generation to come might know them. And even the children which, sh which should be born, who should arise and declare to them to their children. So we have the last generation mm -hmm. again in verse 6. I think it's fascinating, J.R., uh, that in Israel today we have really two movements in Judaism. Uh, we have secular Judaism, which is presently in control of the infrastructures of the land, and we have a growing religious Judaism. The rabbis have set up their yeshivas. They study prophecy. They are beginning to very seriously tell their children, you are the generation. Moshiach is coming soon. Uh, this, is, I think, is what is meant by uh, this phrase, Lador Akaron, the last generation. I think we're seeing it this very era in which we live. Yeah. Now, please understand that in Deuteronomy, we have the numbering of the Torah, and we come down to, the, because of the numbers of those verses, we can see this generation mm -hmm. that, would, that should be born. 
1936 through 1948 and mm -hmm. the years following. In fact, in Deuteronomy, in the verse that corresponds with 1948, mm -hmm. Moses said that they would come into the land which their fathers possessed and mm -hmm. they shall possess it. Yes. Then we come over to the Psalms, which were likewise numbered this time by David. And we have book 19, the 19th book of the Bible, and the 48th chapter, so to speak, the Psalm. And it describes what happened in 1948. Yes, it does. So we have the Hebrew calendar uh, dating by Moses and the Julian calendar, or Gregorian calendar dating by David, book 19, chapter 48 for the birth of Israel in 1948. Each so, time, J.R., accompanied by uh, this idea, I will open my mouth in a parable, I will utter dark sayings of old. In other words, folks, there is something there that's just beneath the surface that you need to find out about. That's what's being said here. Yes. And then, of course, Psalm 78, when he, he deals with this again, about the dark sayings, the parables, the last generation, the children that should be born. In 1978, we had the makings of the peace treaty with Egypt, as Menachem Begin and uh, Anwar Sadat uh, and Jimmy Carter hammered out the peace treaty uh, that is in effect until this day. And then, Gary, let's go over to Psalm 102 because mm -hmm. uh, that seems to represent the year 2002, mm -hmm. and we have a specific promise here about the last generation. Indeed we have, <clears throat> these would be the closing verses of Psalm 102, starting with verse 18, it says, this shall be written for the generation to come. Again, that's a translation of the Hebrew, Lador Akaron. This shall be written for the last generation, and the people uh, which shall be created shall praise the Lord. And J.R., the verses that follow this are, are remarkable. Yes. And you know, verse 16 says, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. So here is the promise that in this last generation, we're going to have the appearing of the Messiah, the Lord in his yeah. glory. You know, in our day, if there's any term or any idea that's, that's truly universally hated, it is the term Zion or Zionism. And yet, J.R., when we look at these uh, last generation prophecies, they're always accompanied by uh, the term Zion. Verse 13 here in Psalm 102, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. J.R. just read the, the one about the Lord building up Zion. Uh, and, of course, in Psalms 48 and 78, you have the term Zion. Uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know what's being prophesied here. But you have to know a little Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know a little Hebrew. <laughs> so look, the Lador Akaron is, a, is that mysterious word uh, to which the children that shall be born to that last generation mm -hmm. are a part of every single passage, be it by Moses or David or Jesus. It's kind of interesting that the three most important figures in Israel's history, Moses, the great lawgiver, mm -hmm. David, the great king, and the Messiah, who will be the greatest lawgiver, judge, king, prophet, priest, king, all combined together, made his final statement that this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. That's what's so interesting about this. Now, Moses did some dating. David did some dating, mm -hmm. and Jesus said in those three Gospels that when we come down to this last generation, there would be certain things that would be happening. And he described this last century to a T with the wars and rumors of wars, nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, disease, uh, famine, mm -hmm. earthquakes. This is... This must be that generation. In fact, I have no doubt, Gary, we have so many proofs through the Bible that we're living in that last generation. When you can prove something two or three different ways and you come up with the same idea, well, that's proof enough. And Jesus' own words, to bring this all back home, uh, included the parable of the fig tree when its branch is yet tender, putteth forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. Well, J.R., 
summer is the figure used in the Bible for the, the harvest of the fruit, which of course is a metaphor for the end of the age. And he said, when you see that fig tree, which we have, by the way, the fig tree is Israel. The figs are the princes of Israel. Jeremiah prophesied they'd be replanted. They are. The fig tree's grown up. Uh, and, and he says, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Mm. So if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to trust Him today. We're living in the last generation. There will be no other chance. Trust Jesus. Ask Him to save you today. We'll be back in just a moment.